Well, happy Monday, and welcome to Mondays with Michael Live here in the Training Solutions Facebook room. Well, I thank you all for joining, and for those of you who aren't able to join but are able to see this post session, thanks for checking it out today. Um, I just want to say happy Monday and happy Columbus Day for those of you, uh, my fellow Italians who are on Facebook and who are watching this. Happy Columbus Day, and for those of you who have the day off, hopefully you're enjoying the day off. Uh, but for those of us and some of us in small business, you know, Monday is just another work day. It doesn't matter if it's a holiday. We're just here working. So but thanks for joining me in the room. Uh, today's session is on uh, classroom training versus online training. I get this question pretty regularly from our clients. You know, Michael, what is the best way to deliver learning for our employees? Is it best to do it in the classroom, take people out of their work spot, if you will, off the work site, get them in the classroom and teach them a skill or something new about the company? Or is it better to deliver this online, whether it's online with them at their desk by themselves or better online while well, within a group setting online? We'll talk a little about both of those today. So I'm going to give you some tips I've learned along the way in both online training and classroom training, some things you may want to think about before you go down this road, either way you do this, and then get to a place where we talk about really blended learning. How do you, how do you combine the classroom and the online experience to make an overall learning experience for your employees? So let's talk a little first about classroom training. So when we tell clients, what I, what I tell my clients as far as classroom training goes, preparation is really, really the key. And whether you're doing something in the classroom or doing something online, being prepared is very, very important. Um, the classroom situation is, A, you have to have your content prepared. What is your presentation all about? And you also need to prepare the room itself, the environment. So as I'm preparing my presentation, for my classes, um, I'm also thinking about the space. So when I talk to my clients about doing training, we want to make sure the room is conducive for learning. So we prefer folks in an environment where they're sitting in small groups, where the instructor has the ability to walk around, where people can see and hear the video and or presentation. Um, we want to make the classroom experience learning uh, that is good for adult learning. It's not like being in college where you're sitting in straight rows or straight chairs. I'm not sure how much interaction you can really get in that environment. Um, so we recommend folks being in small groups and the environment being conducive to learning. Um, as always with the classroom training, you want to get there a bit early. You want to make sure that the room is properly set up. You don't want to walk in the time you're going to teach. You want to make sure that the room is all set up. You want to greet your participants when they come in. You want to start making that personal connection with those participants as you start, start the class. Make sure there's name tags available. You want to call folks by their first name. <clears throat> As you're preparing your class, the classroom experience really needs to be one that's participant-centered. The person that's taking the class is the most important person in your training delivery. I work and I've seen a lot of trainers where, say it's all due respect, it's about the trainer and what the trainer knows. It's not really about the learner, what the learner needs to take away. So as you're preparing your class, you want to think about what the learner needs to feel and experience and learn prior to leaving your session? And did they get the opportunity to be engaged, to ask questions, to participate in that learning experience? Did they participate with you? Are there opportunities for them to ask you questions and to give you feedback? Is there opportunity for them to participate with each other, either through large group activity or small group activity, and have you layered those in throughout your classroom experience? So there is a cost involved here, both taking the folks away from their workplace, the cost of not being productive, and then the cost of the training in the classroom. Those are things you'll need to consider as you start going down the classroom, the classroom road. We always try to use a bit of video in our classes, whether it's a assessment-based program or video-based program, we always try to include a little video. Our three goals when we're doing classroom training are for participants to hear about the behavior or the skill, we want them to see the behavior and skill, hopefully in some type of video vignette. And then we want them to practice the skill in the classroom. So they hear it, they see it, and then they do it. And we feel that if we do all three of those things in the classroom, that participants really learn the content and are able to demonstrate that skill back at the workplace. So keep those three things in mind as you're planning your classroom training. And if you're purchasing classroom training, make sure those three things are involved and engage with, with your learners. So we always talk about this discussion versus presentation. So as a general rule of thumb, and I've heard this from many experienced trainers uh, for, for a long time, 
Um, the way your training should be structured and delivered, any, between eight and 10 minutes, there should be a different activity that the participants are actually doing. And um, I learned this story from an experienced trainer who said, you know, that's why there are television commercials on TV every eight minutes or so, because the human brain only has about eight minutes worth of activity in it before it needs to do something else. And that's why there's a commercial. That's why you get up and leave your seat. You get something to eat, go to the bathroom, come back and continue watching your television show. So as you're constructing and building your training, make sure that you have at least enough activities uh, every eight or 10 minutes, whether it's a exercise done by themselves or something that's done at the table or something that you're facilitating as a large group. Make sure there's about uh, something you should do every eight or 10 minutes. So you've done your classroom training. You're really excited about it. You've done two, three, four hours, maybe a full day of training. You've planned your program. You've made it participant centered. It worked really well. But how do you know the impact of that learning and that experience of your learners? Well, the best way is to do some, something that's follow it up. So what can you do in the classroom to make sure that the skill or the behavior change happens back at the workplace? So there are a lot of things you can do. First thing you want to do is you want to get the supervisors involved in either preparation of the training or post-training activity. You want to make sure that the employee supervisors understand what skills or behaviors they are learning in the classroom so they can apply those skills or behaviors back at the workplace. It's a very, very important part of the, of the training process. You may want to schedule something followed up, either virtually, uh, online, or either um, uh, post-training uh, as, as another group. So you definitely want to do something post-training. You just don't want to train and leave. You want to do something post-training uh, to make sure that the learning sticks. So that's kind of the classroom training. So the preparation, the environment, the interaction of your audience, making sure all that takes place um, in your uh, classroom training. So let's talk a little about online training and, and the vice versa versus online training because, I get, again, I get this question from clients all the time. Is it better to learn this in the classroom or is it better to learn this online? So there are some things to think about and some standards to think about if you're trying to deliver training online. First is whether you want this to be asynchronous or synchronous training. So do you want this online training to be self-study, if you will, at the desktop of the individual? Or do you want this online training being done as a group, a group participatory experience over the web? So there are a couple things to think about. So if you want this to be something that gets done by myself alone, at my desktop, you can install, purchase online training that gets delivered individually to the participant at their desktop. Uh, we see a lot of this in what we call compliance training, sexual harassment training or other compliance training for our clients. It's a good way for them to track who participated. And the way our, our online training is structured, there are assessments and tests along the way to make sure that the learner um, actually learned what they were supposed to learn and they weren't you know, doing three other things while they should have been taking this online course. So there's that way of doing online training. It's one on me and my computer at my desktop, learning a topic, and then being tested on that topic along the way. And then HR or training tracks my participation and my score of that individual training course. But then there's group participation training over the web. Uh, Adobe Connect, WebEx, and other, other uh, vendor providers have developed tools and websites that can really be participatory for groups to do the online training together. And a lot of our clients like this idea of doing online training together in groups. That said, again, there's a lot of preparation in ensuring that the online environment is as successful as the classroom environment when you take the training from the classroom into the virtual space. You have to make it participant centered. You have to make it so that eight or 10 minutes go by and there's an activity that participants are doing either collectively or as an individual or in small groups or pairs so they can they feel that the online group learning is the same interactivity as the classroom learning. And that takes a lot of practice and a lot of time. There are a lot of good books. A lot of my friends at ATD have written really good books about doing online training and I would encourage you to read up on it a little bit. There's the technology that you have to make sure is very well um, very well prepared and make sure that the technology has a backup plan. So if you were to learn, lose connection in the middle of your session in the room, what would you do? If you lost your phone line, what would you do? So it's a little different than the classroom. There's a technology piece that you have to make sure that uh, is in play when you take the training 
to the uh, to, to the uh, online environment. So I hope that answers a little questions for you for both classroom training versus online training. There are advantages of both. Uh, there are challenges with both, and you should be aware of those challenges before you go down either road. But I think the best plan, if uh, you had to use either or both, would be to use both. Um, let me give you a couple of examples. Uh, we believe that if you're doing classroom training, there should and could be an online piece to support what you've learned in the classroom. Uh, we do a lot of everything disc training. For those of you who know me, I'm a kind of a disc guy. And we're fortunate Wiley has built a website called myeverythingdisc.com that supports what we teach disc-wise in the classroom post-training. And I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about what the portal is avail what's available on the portal, but it is a reinforcement tool that participants can use by themselves post-training to keep what we taught in the classroom alive. So there's that online piece to support the classroom training. If you're doing online training, whether it's harassment training or some other type of training in the, uh, in the uh, virtual environment, why not have something post-training that's maybe lunch and learn or it's something that's in the classroom post-training to make sure that everyone that took the training course online is kind of on the same page and maybe HR or supervisors can come in and support the online training with some type of classroom or get together um, environment training. So kind of that classroom supportive. So this blended learning we think is a good idea. So doing something in the classroom, follow it up with something online, doing something online, but then following up something face to face either in the classroom or another environment would be a good idea. So as always, uh, we're coming up to that 12 minute mark. I have a couple of commercials I'm going to give you now, just a couple of things to remind that we're doing here at Training Solutions, but I do want to keep this under 15 minutes. So uh, for those of you who have signed up, uh, tomorrow, 11 o'clock Eastern time, we're doing the webinar on getting more data before you make a hiring decision. It's part of the PXT Select product. Um, I will put a link later on back, in, back in, into the uh, chat or the comments area here at Facebook. If you'd like to sign up for that, we still have seats available for that webinar tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow at um, 11 a.m. Eastern time. I apologize, I thought I said 1 a.m. 11 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow. Um, and we'll do that through uh, ReadyTalk, which is our which is our web tool. So if you need a link and to register, let me know. I'll get that to you. And then uh, we are doing an executive briefing. Uh, Wiley's coming out to Northern Virginia, Texas Corner specifically, to talk about this PXT Select tool for some of our clients on November 2nd in the morning in Tyson's Corner. Uh, if you'd like any more information on that, just ping me here uh, at uh, Facebook um, via Messenger or send me an email, Ferraro, F-E-R-R-A-R-O, at trainingsolutions.com. Uh, as always, send me your HR-related questions. We do get a lot of questions about whether to deliver training online or in the classroom, so I wanted to make sure we got this session done today. Uh, our next session, next Monday, Mondays with Michael Live, here in the room at 1 o'clock Eastern, uh, will be team building training. What works and what doesn't work with team building training? Again, we get a lot of calls for team building training. I get a lot of calls from HR directors that say, you know, Michael, I have a team down the road here, and they're really not really working well, working well together, and I think things are going to explode unless we do something. So um, we come in and do team building training for teams that are struggling. We also do team building training for teams that are doing quite well. They just want to take it to the next level. So come join me next Monday, 1 o'clock here in the room. Monday's with Michael Live. And we'll talk about online. We'll talk about, uh, talk about online training. We'll talk about team building training. Some of it may be online, so we'll talk about that too. Uh, thanks for coming in, and I uh, hope to see all of you soon. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.